are too many forms of energy for us to explore. Not just explore, but utilize. And it goes back 100 years. The first coal empire was, was England in the 19th century. And guess how we became the powerhouse? Diversification, as Ken Heckler just said. Those who are Ken Heckler's age and that, that might be here or close to it may remember Model T. Does anyone remember, show of hands, anybody remember Model T? Okay, there's a few of you. Do you, you remember that, that, that switch on the front of it where, where you said you mix the fuel? Why was that? That was because before Standard Oil came along, and frankly, at that time, before 1925, Standard Oil was one quarter biofuel and not petroleum fuel, you were able to use the mixtures there because every, there weren't all these gas stations and there was no need for them, even though we had automobiles that were running on electricity, on air, compressed air, and, and other uh, forms. You said and you mixed it because every farm made their own energy. Every farm made their own fuel. And we can do that today better than we ever have ever been able to. And you have just been lied to by the news sources that tell you the same thing over and over again and give you no real choices. Sorry. <laughs> Yes, I do believe we can become energy independent. I believe it's going to take leadership from the White House and from Congress to set a goal and say by this day we need to become energy independent. We have an entire department, the Department of Energy, that should be working exactly towards that, and they're not doing that. We also can use natural gas, and I work for a company that tracks natural gas wells, and there is an unbelievable storage space in that Marcellus shale of natural gas, something called the Saudi Arabia of the United States, that can supply us with endless energy. Apparently, I don't know whether we can become energy independent, but we should be working in that direction. Uh, we need a balance between the environmentalists and the businesses. Because if we let the environmentalists take over this country, we wouldn't have any businesses. We would all be living in teepees because that's the only things that don't pollute. There would be no jobs in this country. I agree that we need to start phasing into the other sources of energy, like natural gas. Uh, the reports that I've seen on the Marcello Shale indicate that we could become a energy exporter in this country. We have so much of this. Foreign countries are coming in now and buying up portions of this Marcella shale. So I think we can do a lot of it. I don't know whether we can get there completely, though. Thank you. Not only can we become energy independent, we must become energy independent. We know it to ourselves morally, ethically, politically. Folks, again, Harry Bruner and I both have sons over there in the Middle East where our oil money is going and finding its way into the hands of terrorists who then build IEDs and try to kill our sons. Okay, and many of your old sons are going to do We've got the capability, we just need the mindset that says we're going to make ourselves energy independent. So the moratoriums that President Obama has now put down on the Gulf Shore drilling and so forth, what are they, that uncertainty again? We're picking off the boot off the coast of Brazil and elsewhere at Digging, and there go those American jobs. When we put the, when we, when Jay Rockefeller says we're going to kick the can down the road two years to determine whether CO2 is a pollutant or not, all he's done is create an uncertainty in the market as jobs leave West Virginia to go out to Wyoming and elsewhere to mine the coal. Folks, Jim Hogarth, the West Point classmate of mine, is one of the leading technologist uh, experts in the country about battery powered and electric powered uh, cars. And, and, and I'm, I'm investing with it. I believe in it. We're going to get there. We just can't get there immediately. So let's work together and move towards energy independence. With all the other things that I talked about earlier, nuclear, wind, solar, and all that. But right now, today, it's coal, oil, and gas. So let's dig it and put the Western Coast back to work. Thank you. <laughs> stand up on this one because this one's dear to my heart. My grandfathers and my father were coal miners. And you know, I really get upset when I hear people say, there's no more coal left in West Virginia. We need to go to alternative, alternative fuels. I have no problem with that. But you know, 
When was the last time you saw in West Virginia on a cold winter day? It could be two weeks before you would see the sun. Am I right? Two weeks before you might see the sun here. So solar panels, I'm sorry. Maybe in California, but not in West Virginia. I just passed the windmills going to Petersburg. You know, they were really an eyesore. People want to talk about mountaintop removal. You should see these monsters on top of the hill. And they produce very little energy. Let's take the coal. Let's, let's produce and do other things with the coal. We can become energy independent. Let's drill the gas here and do it effectively, efficiently. It's 6,000 to 8,000 feet down where those wells are being fracked. It's below the water surface. There's a lot of lies and misinformation out there. People need the truth. West Virginia is abundant in resources. And you know, God even told Abraham, Moses in the Bible, to dig the brass and the gold and the things in the hills. So we must continue to use West Virginia's resources. I went short earlier and I'm longer this time. I'm sorry. <laughs>